in the next part of the lecture, we are going to learn about absolute convergence. So um, what is absolute convergence? Sometimes uh, it is convenient to consider, instead of the original series, it is convenient to consider the series uh, whose terms are absolute values of the terms of the original series. Right. So, for example, um, I don't know, if, if you have an alternating series that, that looks like this, minus 1 to the power n over n, if this is a n, then its absolute value is going to be the same thing without negative 1 to the power n. So it's, it's going to be just 1 over n, right? And we say that our series converges absolutely uh, if the new series constructed out of the original one by putting its absolute value um, at its terms is, is convergent. Uh, so why do we uh, care about absolute convergence? Because uh, as we are going to see very soon, sometimes it is hard to uh, to work with series whose uh, sign is changing uh, with positive and negative terms. So uh, series with positive terms are easier to consider, and um, uh, which is why very often it is just easier to to work with. Um, the, the series of absolute values rather than the original series. So, and the most important theorem about absolute convergence is that if a series converges absolutely, then it converges, right? So, um, why is this so? It, it's kind of cool, yeah, it, it's a very beautiful um, argument. Let, let me explain it. Uh, so, suppose that we, we have a series, right? So, the, the sum of, let's say, from 1 to infinity of a n and these a n so they they could be some of them could be positive some, some are negative right so here uh some are positive some are negative so we could have something like i don't know sine of n there or something like negative one to some power n or something like that right so it has both positive and negative terms uh, now what can we say about the, the um and at the same time, we know that if we consider the, the series of absolute values, then, then we know that it converges, right? So we were given that. Now, uh, so here is the, 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 the cool trick. Um, so let us consider the, the following series. So let us consider the, the series from 1 to infinity. Um, a n plus absolute value of a n, right? What can we say about this series? Now, so what is this, this really? So a n plus absolute value of a n. Well, a n can be either positive or negative, right? So imagine that if a n is positive, like, I don't know, 13, then 13 plus absolute value of 13 is, is just 26, right? It's 2 times 13. And... Um, if our a n is negative, like, I don't know, negative 7, then plus absolute value of, of, of negative 7 is going to be just, just 0, right? So a n plus absolute value of a n is either 0 if uh, a n is less than or equal than, than 0, or 2 times a n, which is the same as 2 uh, times absolute value of a n if a n is positive. In either case, Notice that it is non-negative and it is less than or equal than 2 times absolute value of a n. Right? So, um, one thing is that since it is non-negative, it means that we can apply the uh, comparison test to it, right? So, since the terms of our series a n plus absolute value of a n are non-negative. It means that we can comply uh, apply comparison test, right? So comparison because the comparison test can only be applied to series of uh, non-negative terms, and this series, the sum of two absolute value of a n from one to infinity, the, this series converges, right? So because it's just the well, we're, we're given it here, so it converges. So, which means that we have managed to evaluate, to estimate the terms of this series from
from above by uh, terms of a convergent series and everything is positive right so which means that the this series converges by the comparison test okay so the cool thing about it is that um, we can construct the original series from this series and the absolute value series right so since a n equals a n plus absolute value of a n minus absolute value of a n right so which means that the original series is actually a difference of two uh, convergent series right so our is the sum of one from one to infinity of a n is the sum from one to infinity a n plus absolute value of a n minus the sum of uh, absolute value of a n from one to infinity so this series converges this series converges so the difference of two convergent series is convergent again so this is how we can um, prove that if a series converges absolutely then it converges right so which means that uh if we don't know whether our series converges or not then but we managed to to get rid of the this negative one to the end or something like that and show that it converges after removing the negative negative ones then the original series is also going to converge like in this example it is probably super simple because in this example we can apply the alternating series test and derive the convergence but the question is is it absolutely convergent right so here a n is minus one to the power n minus one over n to the five so absolute value of a n is basically the, the same thing without the everything that can um, produce a negative negative uh, sign right so minus one so it's, it's going to be just one over n to the five and we know that the series um, sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the 5 converges because it is a p-series with p equals 5 and 5 is bigger than 1. And since the, the series of absolute values converges, it means that the answer is, is yes, it is absolutely convergent. So here is another example. Is the, this series con absolutely convergent? And th this is probably um, a trickier um, example because here we are going to need two steps. So one step is to to put an absolute value in front of it, right? So the absolute value of a n. If this is our a n, then absolute value is going to be well, just absolute value of cosine n divided by n cubed. Now, notice that n cube is, is positive because we are taking basically, well, it, it doesn't say where the, the sum starts, but we cannot start from zero because then we will have to divide by zero. So the, the, start, the, the sum probably starts from, from one to infinity, right? Uh, so n is bigger than zero. So the, this is really, so absolute value of n cube is just n cube itself. But the numerator is still the absolute value of cosine n. So cosine n itself can be positive or negative, but its absolute value, of course, is, is going to be positive. Right. Um, now, we can't really um, work it out. I mean, so what cosine n is. But uh, what we do know is that cosine n is between negative 1 and 1. So the absolute value of cosine n is definitely less than 1, right? So the absolute value of cosine n is less than or equal to, to 1. Well, strictly speaking, it is strictly smaller than 1 because n, uh, it can only be 0 if n is 0. But n is, 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 it can only be precisely 1 if n is 0, but n is not 0. OK. Um, in any case, um, it, it follows that this is less than or equal than 1 over n to the cube. And the, the series, one of the, the sum of 1 over n to the cube, from 1 to infinity converges because it, again it is a p-series with p equals 3 which is bigger than 1.
So we managed to evaluate terms of our series from above by terms of a convergent series, right? So it means that the uh, sum from one to infinity of absolute value of cos n n over n cube converges. But again, it means that our series is absolutely convergent, which means that on the, the series itself also converges. Okay, uh, so that's it about absolute convergence.